Ciao everyone, my name is Matteo Marciano and welcome to how to restore audio with Isotope RX. Now, what is audio restoration? Audio restoration is nonetheless the process of removing noise or audio imperfection from sound recordings. In many cases, audio restoration can address problems such as ambience background noises, electrically generated interferences, hums, audience noise, and as well overload due to distortion or clipping. Now, our goal here is to render the best possible sound with the least audible human intrusion. In other words, through Isotope RX, which is one of the best and finest tools for audio manipulation and restoration, we have to avoid any form of artifacts that could distract the listener from the key element of a film, which is dialogues. Now, without any further ado, let's move into Isotope RX to see and understand a little bit more how the interface works. Now, Isotope RX is designed to be the definite audio restoration application. Through this app, we could remove hum without sacrificing low-end frequencies, reduce ambience hiss without compromising upper partials, eliminates pops and clicks, leaving no audible artifacts, remedy to distortion and even gaps in audio recording, repair audible clipping with perfect precision, replace damages part with an audible patches and more. It's definitely one of the best and most powerful machine learning tool that we have at our disposal in the post-production and in the music production industry. Now, given the fact that with Isotope RX, you can, yes, achieve great results, but as well messing up your work pretty bad, I wanna just share with you some tips. First and foremost, make sure you have backed up your work elsewhere. Make multiple version, meaning create playlists where you can you know, work with Isotope RX and then always have a backup plan and come back to the original version. And begin to work with the most obvious and obnoxious sounds you hear first. Again, the goal here is not to making our dialogues or our sounds uh, you know, as if they've been recorded in an anechoic chamber. We're here to enhance the performance. Another great suggestion that I want to give you and share with you is to keep good notes on what you do and how you do it in order to always come in back to your work. And again, back up your work, back up your work, back up your work. Now, by default, Isotope RX shows you two different windows or two different displays at the same time. The first display that you see here is the blue waveform, also known as waveform display, which is very similar to what you're very used to and accustomed into your DAW. The second view is these orange sets of line, which is the spectrogram. Now you can change the amount of waveform versus spectrogram view with this little encoder down on the left corner that will allow you to display only the spectrogram content or the waveform content. Now, when using Isotope RX, you're going to see and find yourself using more the spectrogram rather than the waveform, because it's through the spectrogram that you can really spot problems contained within the audio. Now, over here, talking about spotting problems with the audio, I can already tell that we're dealing with dialogues. As a matter of fact, in the upper range of our spectrum, I'm seeing a lot of lines that correspond to S's. We're going to go over how to spot problems within the spectrogram in a little bit. Now, if you right click with your mouse, you can open the view spectrogram settings. Now, from here, of course, you can customize the way you view your content within Isotope RX. The thing that I want you to show you is over here, the type of spectrogram settings. Over here, you can choose between regular, auto adjustable, multi-resolution, and as well, adapted least parse. Now, there are differences within the spectrogram settings that would allow you to see different things within the audio. Let's start with describing the regular SDFT. Now, the SDFT stands for Short Time Fourier Transform. This method used to transform the audio data into the spectrogram, and it's very common used by editors. This has a very fixed and uniform time frequency resolution. Moving along, I'm going to choose the audio adjustable SDFT. Now, this is the RX default mode. In this mode, you can adjust the FFT size according to the zoom level. An example could be the time and the frequency resolution of the spectrogram. As you can see here, if I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit, we're slowly changing the resolution of our spectrogram. Moving along, we have the multi-resolution. 
Now this mode is really great because in this case the spectrum allows you to display and show the most important information in the lower end of the spectrum and in the higher end of the spectrum in terms of frequency content. Lastly, we have a mode called Adaptively Sparse. This mode, in other words, automatically varies times and frequency resolution of the spectrogram in order to achieve the best spectrogram sharpness in every area of the time frequency plane. Now, with Adaptively Sparse, we can actually have access to the FFT size. Now, the FFT is the Fast Fourier Transform size. In other words, by increasing the FFT size, we're going to have a greater resolution in terms of frequencies. Now, within the spectrogram settings, there is an absolute fantastic feature called Enable Reassignment. Look what happened to the spectrogram after I click on it. As you can see, the computer is start doing a calculation over here. And once it's done, you have a completely different visual display of your spectrogram. In other words, this tool controls and enables a special technique for the spectrogram calculation that will allow very precise pitch tracking of any harmonic components of the signal. This is a fantastic tool in order for you to spot true problems contained within the harmonic content of any given sound. Now, another very useful tool within the spectrogram settings is the frequency scale. Now, the frequency scale is on the right side of your screen next to the decibel scale and you can access the frequency scale by right clicking on it, accessing the different frequency scale or again within the spectrogram right click, spectrogram settings, frequency scale. The different scales have different characteristics from displaying the vertical frequency information of the spectrogram. Let's start by analyzing the linear. Now the linear frequency scale, as you can see over here, is changing the way my frequency are displayed within my spectrum. Actually, since we're here, I'm going to disable the enable reassignment. So as I was saying, the linear shows frequency spread out in a uniform way. This is very useful when you want to analyze especially higher frequency content, as you can see over here. If instead we're going to choose log or extended logarithmic, as you can see over here, my view is completely changing. As a matter of fact, this scale puts a little bit more emphasis and attention on lower frequency and lower part of the spectrum, which is generally where you're going to find a lot of hum or ground buzz. Moving along to the MEL scale, now MEL is the acronym for melody. This is a frequency scale based on how humans perceive sounds, and it corresponds very well on how we hear different pitches in different sounds. Lastly, we have BARC, and this specific frequency analysis is also based on how we perceive sounds. The analysis that Isotope RX does within this mode corresponds to a series of critical bands. So if you keep an eye on the y-axis of our spectrum, which goes from low frequency to high frequency, look how it changes in relation to the frequency scale. So right now we are in BARC. If I move back to logarithmic, as you can see, we got a greater resolution at lower frequencies. I'm going to move back to linear. Going back to bark. As you can see, there are critical bands displayed on our frequency spectrum or on our frequency scale, to be more correct. And I'm going to go back to mel, melody. So as you can understand, the frequency scale changes the frequency resolution in order for you to focus on specific part of the spectrum. One more thing to notice is that the frequency go from very low, which have a very thick and dark color starting from the bottom, to very high frequencies. So the dark orange color are going to represent low frequencies. And moving up to the frequency spectrum, we're going to see different shades of orange, which represents high frequencies. All right. Now that we have talked about the spectrogram settings, let's close this tab and I want to show you a little bit more about the main window in Isotope RX. Now on the top here we have the file tab. This is a tab that will represent and show all the files that have been imported through Isotope RX from Pro Tools. Now right underneath you have the waveform view. Through this view, you can click and move the file contained within the editorial window or Isotope RX. 
right here in the center of the window, you have the two display, the waveform display and the spectrogram display. Again, to change the view between these two, you can use this little encoder on the left bottom corner of the window that will let you see a little bit more of the waveform or the spectrogram. Through the slider, you can as well choose a certain percentage of waveform versus spectrogram view, which sometimes might be very handy. Now, by pressing spacebar, right now, as you can see, I've started my playback. About one minute from a giant shopping center. And by clicking with my mouse, I can easily reposition my playhead giant to have isotope RX we're starting exactly from a specific location. Now, moving right underneath our spectrogram, we have a set of tools. The first here on the left are our zoom tools. I can click on this magnifier glass with the plus and zoom in, click on the minus and zoom out, or I could reset my default zoom with this little magnifier glass. Now, another function is the zoom to selection, which once you enable this, you can make a selection and zoom in. I can always revert to the overall zoom. Next to it, I have my zoom tool, which allows me pretty much like in Pro Tools to highlight a section and zoom in, and I can get very close. I could still use this tool to zoom out, and with my grabber tool, I can grab perhaps a selection. Well, in this case, there is nothing to grab, only the gain volume. But if there were a selection, I could have grabbed that selection and move it elsewhere. On the right side, instead, we have our selection tools. Now, the selection tools are divided as it follows. You have a time selection, which allows you to create a time selection from top to bottom. You have a frequency selection, which allows you to select different frequencies. And then you have this little button in the middle known to be the frequency and time selection, which actually allows you to do a selection that would incorporate frequencies and time. Lastly, we have some pretty unique feature of Isotope RX. The first is the lasso tool. The lasso tool allows you to, like if you're using a lasso, to select a specific part of your frequency or your spectrogram and again, perform a noise removal. Another tool that is very handy is the brush tool. Now the brush tool allows you almost to do the exact same thing, but rather selecting different size of brush by holding down your mouse over. And so right now I can reduce the size of our brush. And again, brush it over a specific sounds and remove that sound. Lastly, we got the magic tool. Now the magic tool is pretty phenomenal. The magic tools allows you to click on a specific harmonic of a sound and within this section over here let you choose the number of harmonics that are part of a specific sound. Now look what happened if I click on all. Right now it has identified all the harmonics that belong in this case to my vocals or to my dialogues. Next to it I have my clip gain which if I move back to my waveform view allow me to, in other words, like in Pro Tools, to clip gain a specific section of our dialogues. Now, the last few things I want to talk to you about is the transport. As you can see over here, we have the classic transport play, fast forward and stop, and this little square transport play. In this case, this identify what this transport is going to play. In other words, if I have, let's say, time and frequency selection active, by pressing this transport play over here, this will play only the content of the selection. Another thing, we have an undo history over here underneath the module chain, which are all the modules that we're gonna use in order to restore our audio. And right next to it here, we have different types of zooms. Now the first slide over here is our zoom in and zoom out, which work exactly like these two buttons over here. Now on top of it, we have are two different types of zooms. In this case, we have the spectrogram zoom. And as you can see right now, what is changing is the frequency resolution of my zoom. Now on the right here, we have our module chain. 
the module chain is divided in restoration and repair module, which has all the modules we're going to be using in order to restore our audio. Down here, we have our production module, which has our EQ match, our leveler, our loudness, and as well many other features which we're going to dive in within the course of this class. Now, the last thing I want to mention are shortcuts. Of course, within Isotope RX, like in Pro Tools, there are many shortcuts, but I'm just going to tell you some of my favorites. Now, the first one is the letter T. Now, the letter T lets you select the time selection tool. The letter R lets you choose the frequency selection tool, whether the letter F lets you choose your selection tool. Now, with the letter L, you can access your laser tool, B, of course, for brush, and W for your magic wand selection tool. Now I'm going to press R and go back to my time frequency selection. As you can see over here, I already have a selection. Now, if you wish to hold that selection and create multiple independent selection, hold down shift. And this will allow you to create different selection within your isotope window. If you wish instead to deselect everything, command D to lose the selection. Now let's focus on zoom shortcut. So command equal will allow you to zoom in. Command hyphen will allow you to zoom out. Now, if I do command shift hyphen, this is gonna give me a full zoom out, eye birth view of the entire isotope RX. And lastly, let's say you wanna zoom to a selection. So I'm going to highlight this part. If you press command backslash, you have a zoom in on the precise selection. I'm gonna reset my zoom, command shift hyphen, and with this, we're done with the most important and basic shortcuts. All right, now that we're done with an overview of how Isotope window works, it's time for us to get to work and restore some audio. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Ciao.